How's everybody doing today? Good? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. How many people love Jesus? You love Jesus? And there's nobody like Jesus. It is such an honor to be here at LifePoint. Uh, as Pastor Rich said, we, we uh, call home St. Louis, Missouri, which we love St. Louis. Uh, but at the same time, it's 27 degrees with snow in St. Louis right now. So we are happy to be at LifePoint. Uh, we're glad to be here. And, and um, man, wasn't worship incredible today? I mean, it was just unbelievable. It, my, it's like this every week. I like like every week it's like this. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. You guys are spoiled. You know, you don't know how good you've got it. And um and, and I mean that sincerely. You you probably don't realize how good you've got it. Um in in, the, in America right now, um eighty five percent of evangelical churches are in decline. And your church is growing rapidly. So you I, I just say that to say to you, I may get a perspective you don't get that what God's doing here is very, very, very special. Very special. His hand's on this place, and um, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And so I just, I just don't, I don't want you to, to ever take it for granted. And, um, and I think that you have just some of the most amazing leaders on the planet. And I mean that. I mean, Pastor Rich, Janet, and Grace are some of the best people on the planet. Um, I, 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 I've told how much I'm, I'm, they mean to us, but I, I just want to say, I, I think Grace is just a special, special young lady. And it's not easy growing up as a pastor's kid. And, um, and I, just, I, I just want you to love on her and encourage her because God's hands on his life, just like it is her dad and mom on her. And so uh, I'm, I'm just proud of them and what God's using them to do here. And, um, and I know because you're connected to them, God's going to do some incredible things in your life as well. Um, now, um, Kayla and I are so excited excited to be here. Kayla and my wife, we've been married 12 years, and, um, and we, uh, we have four children. As a matter of fact, we've got an eight, a six, a four, and then we just had Remy. She's a four-month-old, and she's actually here, and, um, and she, she's gorgeous. I think they got a picture of all of us. It's like, you got to use like a panoramic lens to get all of us in there, you know, but, uh, um, you know, it, it's awesome. I never thought I'd have this, this big a family. Like, I, I, I wasn't somebody who really wanted kids, to be honest with you. You would look at that, and you go, well, you must love kids. I would say, no, I love my wife. That's, that's like, that's the thing. But uh, it, it just, it's a blessing for us to be here. I wish the, the other three could have been here to enjoy it. But um, thank you so much for your hospitality towards us. Um, I want to jump in today uh, to a series you've been in called The Games We Play. The Games We Play. And Pastor Rich did such an amazing job last week of talking about the blame game. Wasn't that so helpful? I mean, just super helpful. Um, and I, 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 the first couple of weeks of this series have really focused on um, difficult or relationships that are going bad. They're in dysfunction. And uh, how many of you have um, in your life somewhere a dysfunctional relationship, like a difficult relationship? Some of you work with, some of you related to. How many of you are sitting beside that person right now? Anybody? Anybody? If you know you're brave enough. Um, <laughs> L listen, there is nothing more draining than a difficult relationship. Nothing will suck the life out of you more than, than a work relationship or a, a marriage relationship or friendship or parent that, that is it's dysfunctional. As a matter of fact, I, I bet some of you are here today and you've got, you're so fed up with the relationship that's went bad in your life that honestly, you're just thinking about dyeing your hair, getting a new phone number and like moving out to the glades. Like you just, you don't want to see people anymore because you're so done with the games we play when it comes to relationships. And so um, I, I want to come today and I, I want to encourage you um, from a passage in John chapter four. I'd love for you to follow along John chapter four and, um, and, and, and I want to say it this way. Um, the title of this message is pretty hyped. Here, here's the title. 
the key to all relational success. So I mean, that, that's a pretty lofty claim. The key to all, so boss, friends, marriage, dating, the key to all relational success. And I wouldn't give you a title that lofty had it not been something that not I'm teaching, but that Jesus taught. And I just feel like because Jesus teaches it, we can actually say this is the key to all relational success. And, and so um, in John chapter 4, I'm going to give you a little context. Jesus is traveling with his disciples. And he, um, he basically comes to a town called Samaria. They're not staying in Samaria. It's just kind of they're going through. And his disciples are worried about lunch. But Jesus is kind of warning. So Jesus says, here's, here's the deal, guys. I want you all to go ahead and find lunch. And I'm going to sit here by this well, where we, well, like a watering well. And, and he says, I'm going to sit here and rest. And it almost appears like it's coincidental, coincidental, but Jesus never does anything accidental. He's very intentional. And he's sitting there because he, in his knowledge as the Savior, knows there's a woman who's getting ready to approach. And the Bible says it's about noon, and she comes up, and she is a Samaritan woman, and he's a Jew, so there's some racial tension. And, um, and she comes up, and she's coming at noon, which is an unusual time to draw water. As a matter of fact, you would go in the morning or you would go in the evening and almost everybody in the town would be doing it. She's come alone at noon because she doesn't want to run into anybody because she is so fed up with relationships that she has decided she don't want a chance running into somebody. And, um, and she comes to Jesus and what unfolds at the well is, is a counseling session that he explains to her the key to all relational success. Okay, so I'm going to read you the passage, and I'd love for you to follow along. It says, soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Now, he was alone at the time because the disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. So, so there is this, this racial tension between the two. And, um, and, and she said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Now, here's what Jesus is trying to do. He wants to talk to her about the, the, the thing that's going bad in her life, these relationships. Um, but he, he thought maybe the best way to do it is to talk to her about like using this well and water and a bucket as an example to explain this to her. And so that's why he's talking to her about getting a drink of water. And, um, but she says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, and this well is very deep. Where will you get this living water? So she doesn't get what Jesus is doing. Like, like she doesn't get that this is, she thinks he's talking about literal water. And, and so Jesus replied, he's going to try again. Anyone who drinks water will soon, for this water, will soon become thirsty again. He's basically saying this, this can't quench the thirst that's really on the inside of you. But... Those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. And it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. But she doesn't get it. She says, please, sir, said this woman, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. She thinks Jesus is offering indoor plumbing. She doesn't get that he's talking about that there's a deeper something on the inside of her that is going unsatisfied. So Jesus says, all right, enough with the illustration. Let me just talk directly to you about why I'm here. And he says to her, go get your husband. And she says, um, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you're right, you've had five. And the guy you're living with right now, he's not even married to you. And all of a sudden she realizes, oh, you're not talking about buckets and water, are you? And um, now many scholars will tell you that this passage is about worship. Some will tell you it's about racial, uh, ex, you know, racial kind of, uh, um, you know, coalitions being built. Some will tell you it's about women being empowered by Jesus. And all of those things can be true. But at its core, this is nothing more than Jesus loving on a woman who's broken because of relationships. Because Jesus would never use a person to explain a principle more than he cares about that person as an individual. And, and, and this woman is broken. She would be the spokesperson for dysfunctional relationships. 
I mean, we're talking about she has had five marriages. She's working on contestant number six. It, it, like, she changes men more than I change shirts. Like, like, this lady has some dysfunction that's obviously available, and it's draining her. Like, your relationships have drained you. It is draining her, and she's wondering, will I ever find the right boss? Will I ever find the right marriage? Will I ever find the right person to date? Will I ever find the right friend? Will I ever seem to get that person right? She, she's wondering this and she's depleted. And the core of her problem is this, that she holds on to this misbelief that, that someone else, another person, has what she needs. That's the issue. Is she keeps changing out fellas because she believes if, if, if she finds the right one, they will ultimately provide her what she needs, what's on the inside of her that needs to be satisfied. And, um, and, and so I, w- I want to kind of help you with that today because the reality is we live by this equation in our relationships that's very false and it damages us. A lo- the longer you keep it, the more you're damaged. And this is the equation when it comes to our relationships. Me plus the right person will equal relational peace. Me plus the right boss me plus the white husband, me plus the right friend, that, that they have what I need, and if I can just find the right person, then I can, in fact, be in happiness, satisfaction, and have relational peace. And that's why Jesus talks to her and says, Lady, you keep coming back to this well because it never satisfies. And in your relationships, you keep coming back to people, yet they've never satisfied. Your equation is wrong because people cannot give you what only I can give you. And, um, and I, want, I want you to see how this even works in our lives. Um, I, I want to show it to you um, in an example. So I'm going to invite my friends, uh, you know, Brenda and Ernie on stage. Can we give them a big God bless you? Love Brenda and Ernie. Awesome, awesome people, and, and we're, we're going to just use this example. Um, I think you should cheer for them for no other reason than they're the ones up here, and you didn't have to come up here because they did it, right? You know, And so um, there they are. Absolutely love them. Been such a blessing to me already. Um, so, so they have been married. Um, turn this way. Everybody wants to see you. Look, um, Ernie has red hair, too, and, he, and he's, he's a big old guy, and we were talking about, like, I've doubled the bulky, red-headed population in this place. Like, we, we're good looking. We, we got it going on. Now, listen, um, they've been married 20 years, and I, I'm just using this as a, yeah, absolutely. That's a big deal, and it's 20 years. That's awesome. Brenda, yes. And, um, and so, um, but here's the thing. I don't want you to get stuck that this is only in marriage, okay? Um, this works in every relationship. Like, like boss and, well, hold on. Boss and employee, <laughs> parent and child, yeah? friend to friend. It works in every, no matter what your relationship is, this works. Now, here's the thing. Um, they came into this relationship, like all of us come into our relationships, we come in with an empty cup expecting the other person to fill us up. I mean, you, when you started dating who you're dating, it's because you thought they have something that will fill me up. Their words of encouragement, their companionship, their, whatever it is, you thought. You started working at the place you work because you felt like besides a paycheck, this guy could help me, this girl could help me, that they have had something to mentor me. We all show up to a relationship with an empty cup. Now, here's the thing that we expect. Ernie shows up believing, man, I found Brenda, beautiful, wonderful. She's going to fill me up. But here's the problem. Ernie didn't realize Brenda also showed up with an empty cup. He, he didn't realize that she showed up thinking, man, Ernie, he is fine. I'm just going to rub that bald head. And, and, and she thinks he's going to fill me up with his words, his attention, his love, his time. And so we both show up with empty cups expecting the other to fill us up. Now, it works for a while. For a little while, it works because we muster up a little bit of something between each other. And so for a little while, you know, when they first, they're dating, you know, she's going to talk about how sexy he is. He, he's going to buy her flowers. Like, like for a little while, it, it works. And then they get married. And then it works well. She's going to bring him breakfast in bed. And, and he's going to bring her roses every day and just sit and look in her eyes. And that's 72 hours of marriage, and then that ends. Okay? And, and then it moves into the phase of it's not just let's go back and forth. It's I'm going to get mine. 
Like you are going to come home on, from work and we are going to spend time together. And you are going to help me with these kids. And, and you know, you will change some diapers. And, and we will buy what I want to buy and we'll, we'll live. And we're not going. And then it gets even a little bit more where it's like, well, listen, you better stop acting like your mama. And we don't ever get me started on your mama. And, and it gets a little more. Now, listen, here's the problem, though. No matter if it's good, bad, whatever it is, neither person is ever full. If anything, we're fighting, I mean, neither, one's always got to be empty, and the other always is just partially satisfied, and it doesn't matter as how much we go back and forth, and how much we try, and, and you know, if we can go to a counselor and work on it, and we can read blogs and try, and we can have date nights, and that's all good, it's all good, but ultimately, we only got so much to share, and someone's always empty, and someone's always not full, and after a while, you get so tired of this, that Brenda starts to think, you know what the real problem is? I need a new they. That Ernie's really the issue. He doesn't have enough for what I need. He can't give me enough attention. He he can't pour into me enough. And I'm just kind of tired of the back and forth. And if I could find the right person, I could be full. And so what happens is, is, you know, Brenda some old flame on Facebook or, or Ernie, some, some, old, some old guy, you know, a girl that, that, uh, that, that it's at the office. And next thing you know, it's, 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 they're, they're, they're looking because they believe that the right person plus them equals relational success. And that's why Jesus looks at this woman and says, lady, your issue is not that you're choosing the wrong person. He said, your issue is you're choosing the wrong source. He said, lady, It don't matter if you've got 10 more husbands. You will never find someone who has enough to pour into you. And you can keep coming with that bucket, and you can try different wells, and you can try different apps, and you can try different people, and you can work at different places. But, lady, it's not a person problem. It's a source problem. And all of a sudden, I believe that one day... And he gets this. He's so tired. And he remembers something Pastor Rich has said on Sunday that, that ultimately God has to be our source for everything we need. And so he wakes up and he's so tired. He says, you know what? I'm actually going to try what Pastor Rich said. I'm going to get up on it on on before I go to work. Instead of turning on Sports Center, I am going to take and I'm going to open my Bible and see if God has anything to say with me. And all of a sudden, as he pours out his heart to God, God starts pouring out into Ernie. And then he starts receiving what he needs, all the encouragement and the security and the, the, uh, the, 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 just the word from God. And he comes down for breakfast, and she's ready to fight because that's all we've ever done. And he goes, no, I'm good. How can I help you? How can I serve you today? What can I do for you? And she goes, what did you do with my husband? She says, what's wrong with you? Why do you have so much peace? Why are you happy? What, what, what's going on? You're always dragging me. And he says, no, no, no. He said, I found a new source. And this morning, God gave me everything I need for this marriage. How can I pour into you? And then, and then guess what happens? She goes, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if it's real. And she shows up the next morning. She starts to worship, and she starts to read her Bible. And all of a sudden, God starts speaking into the deep places of her heart that Ernie could never speak into anyways, even if he, he tried. And he starts, and she gets encouragement. And, and all of a sudden, she starts getting tips on parenting, and, and, and she feels a new source pouring into her to where now they are showing up, not as two people who are fighting over what's not enough. They are showing up both full, ready to serve one another. Because listen... The person's not the key. It's the source. Let let me say this to you. As long as you're in a relationship, no matter what it is, where you're borrowing from each other, that relationship is guaranteed to break down. But if you'll find the right source, you will have relational success. In any relationship, you can have a boss who's not a Christian and you can still be full. You can have a friend who is crazy, drags the life out of you, and you can stay full because you have a different source. And that's what Jesus looks at this lady, and he says, lady, you can keep coming back here with that bucket. You can keep trying husbands, but ultimately you need something that will speak to the deeper satisfaction of your soul. You need a new source. And so um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to unpack that for you. And so I, will you thank them for coming up and helping me out on this? Thank you, guys. Listen, I want to unpack this for you. I want to unpack it for this reason. The Holy Spirit showed me that there are some of you here who just, you are so feeling like this woman felt. 
discouraged that your marriage will never make it, frustrated that you're never going to find a group of friends, you're just so tired of the day. I mean, you got so many dating a- I mean, so many dating accounts. You're from farmers only to Christian Mingle. I mean, you are, listen, and you're so worn of bad relationships. And today the Holy Spirit wants to give you a key to the successful of all of your relationships. But listen, it's a two-part key. So I want you to write down these two things. It's a two-part key, and I'm going to unpack it, why it works. Here's the, here's the first part of the key. You've got to get this. Um, before anything else, stop looking to people for what only God can provide. That's the first key. Stop looking to people for what only God can provide. Listen, God never designed relationships to replace him. And, and, but sometimes that's what we do. And, like, I get a man, and then I'm not going to need God to come through. Listen, God meant for you to find a man that needed him as much as you needed God. And, so, and we see this from the beginning. God created Adam, and he, said, he looked at Adam, who was alone, and he said, it's not good, and he created Eve. But the garden was not just Adam and Eve. It was Adam and Eve and God. Eve was not a replacement for God. Eve and Adam's marriage only worked because of God. And so your relationships aren't supposed to replace God because only God can give you what you need. Listen, every, most sociologists, theologians all agree we have four basic needs. As every person, no matter where you're from, four basic needs. I'm going to give them to you. Here's the first one. You want acceptance. You need acceptance. Listen, every person wants to be accepted. That's the reason that we, we, we don't wear what we wore 30 years ago. Fashion changes because we want to be accepted. That's the reason that you work hard at your home or in your job or you perform because success brings acceptance in our culture. Now, here's the problem, though. Eventually, your clothes will go out of style and your performance will fail at some point. And if you only receive acceptance from people when your clothes go out of style or your performance suffers, they will leave you. They will. But listen, there's only one person one person in all of the universe that will always accept you no matter what you do, what you wear, or who you are. One person. Listen, and here's what he says in Hebrews 13, 5. His name's Jesus. He says, for he himself said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. The word leave means to be physically present. When you have been at your absolute worst, God has never even thought about leaving your presence. He's always with you. Forsake means emotional. It means emotionally, I will not leave you. Listen, you can be with someone physically, but they've emotionally left you. Like you could be sitting with with somebody today who you, you fought with them on the way here. You're physically together, but emotionally their heart's far from you. Jesus says, I will never leave you physically, and I will never turn my heart from you. God does not throw people away. He doesn't. On your worst day, he remains your best friend. On your worst day. And he's the only one who can give you complete, never-moving acceptance. Here, here's the second one thing you need. You need security. We want security. That A lot of us find relationships for security. We won't leave relationships because of the appearance that they give us security. We want to be safe. Listen, we've got all kinds of technology to be safe. And, 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 but here's the deal. As much as I want to, to provide safety for my children, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. All my best efforts, I can only do as much as when they're immediately with me, and I still can't control it. But do you know God knows what's going to happen for eternity? Listen, nothing falls out of his sovereign rulership which makes him uniquely the one who can provide and protect and be present with you at every single moment. When hell thinks up its worst against you, God sees it from beginning to end and is able to protect you. He's able to protect you. Only he can provide the security you want. Listen, here's another one. We all want identity. We all want identity. Listen, everybody wants to know they're special and significant. Nobody wants to think we were put together on a, on a you know, factory floor and we're just another model of someone else, that we are unique. We all want that. And um, here's the thing. People will try to speak into your identity. They will try to tell you who they think you should be or who they want you to be. But listen, only God can tell you who you really are. Only he can because he weaved your identity into your DNA. I remember when I was um, a teenager, kind of going into my 20s, um, I was a very harsh person 
unloving, not empathetic, sarcastic. I mean, just, just really mean, to be honest with you. And, um, and I remember that I felt a call to ministry. Like, I felt like God called me to be a pastor. And I remember my friends coming to me and saying, really? Aren't pastors supposed to like people? Like, you don't like nobody. What, why would, why would, and, and they were right. Nothing about my life showed that that would be who I was supposed to be. But listen, God put inside of me a heart of a pastor, and he knew with enough time in his word and the Holy Spirit, it would come forth. Listen, God knew who I was before I knew who I was. And God knows who you are before you even know who you are. That's why only the creator gets to tell the creation what it is. And only God can tell you who you are. Listen, here's another one. Purpose. We all want purpose. Listen, you want a reason for getting up tomorrow that's more than soccer practice and get, earning a paycheck. And, and, and culture will tell you it's about success, it's about acquiring, it's about appreciate, or, you know, receiving acclaim. But listen, the most miserable people in my experience are people who have achieved the goals they set for themselves only to realize they do not satisfy their soul. I know people with lots of money. I know people with fame. I know people with tons of followers. I know people who have went to the mountaintop only to discover it was the wrong mountain. And they're the most depressed and hopeless people on the planet because what they thought would make them happy is not the thing that actually controls happiness. Listen, on the other hand, here's what Jesus offers. That every day, no matter what your circumstances are, you can wake up knowing you're a child of God, that you have a calling from God, and that includes to bring hope and love and his message to people. And listen, it will be such an impactful giving of your life that it will last for eternity. That what you invest your life in won't fade in a year. It will be for eternity. God offers that to you every day. Now listen to me. When we trust people to give what only God can give us, we always end up in relational breakdown. Listen, when you transfer your trust onto people that's only meant to be for God, it always equals breakdown. There's not a person in here that at some point hasn't tried to make another person God. You thought their words would heal you. You thought their time would make you feel significant enough. You thought their companionship would do this. Listen, every person here has done it. And the reason it fails is they're not God. They're not God. And therefore, they cannot provide what only God can provide. And that's why Jesus looks at this lady and says, Lady, you can come back here with as many buckets as you've got, but you will never be satisfied until you let me give you what only I can give you. So you've got to stop looking to other people for what only God can give. And here's the second thing. Um, you have to start allowing God to supply what you relationally need. You have to start allowing God to do it. So, so um, when you show up every day and say, God, I need you to pour into me because my spouse isn't, my boss won't, my friends aren't, God will pour a fr- He says, lady, there will be a fresh river that comes out of your belly, and it will be a powerful flow in your life. So here's what I'm, I'm saying. You've got to decide where the power is going to come from in your relationships. Are you going to bring the power or are you going to let the Holy Spirit bring the power? And it's a big deal. Who's going to power your marriage? Who's going to power your, you and your employees? Who's going to power your parenting? Are you going to do the best you can or are you going to do the best the Holy Spirit can? And it's a huge question. Listen, Paul asked this question in Galatians chapter 5, and then he answers it. And he says, I'll show you the best you can do, and I'll show you the best God can do. And and, and he shows it to us in Galatians chapter 5, starting verse uh, chapter 5, verse 19. Here's what he says. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, here's what he's saying. That's your flesh. That's who you are. That's the best you can do. He says, when you depend on you, he says, I'm going to show you the results. Now, listen, your flesh wants to be in charge. Listen, you want to think you don't have to listen to anybody in your marriage. You want to think that you don't need counseling. You want to think, I don't need somebody else to speak. I I can find my own job. I can run my own business. I can be my own friend. Your flesh wants to rule. And Paul says this. He says, when you let the flesh rule in your relationships, here's what you should expect. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures. Here's what Paul says. The best you can do in every relationship, you'll have sexual problems. He goes on to say, idolatry and sorcery. Best you can do in every relationship, you have spiritual problems. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition. He says you'll have emotional problems. 
He says, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and all other things like these. He said, you'll have behavioral problems. Here's what Paul says. If you let you power your relationships, the best you can do is you'll have sexual problems, spiritual problems, emotional problems, and behavioral problems. And you know this is true because your relationships are filled with them. My relationships are filled with them. When I depend on my wisdom, my understanding, my self-control, my selflessness or selfishness, I end up with sexual problems, spiritual problems, emotional problems, and behavior problems. That's the best we can do. Listen, it doesn't take a genius to figure out you need the Holy Spirit for relationships. It doesn't take, listen, this, this week I found a quote from the great theologian, Justin Bieber, who also discovered this. Look, look at what Justin Bieber, he's been married roughly a year or so. Look at this, it says, I just think as Christians and as believers, they understand if you don't have God's spirit working in your marriage, it just makes it more and more difficult to make it work, have peace, and find happiness. Justin Bieber is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He is extremely talented. He is so capable that people fill stadiums to listen to him. Listen, he has an expanse of relationships that you and I can't even conceive. And it took him less than a year of marriage to figure out, I don't have enough to make this work. I need God's spirit. Justin Bieber figured out in less than a year what some of you have not figured out in 30 years of marriage. That unless the Holy Spirit build the house, it's not going to last. But listen, Paul says that's the best your flesh can do. And then he says this. He says, now here's the best God can do. He says, verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, joy peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Look at that list. That is who you want to marry. That is who your kids want to raise them. That is who your employer wants to promote. This is the friend you've always wanted. That when you allow the Holy Spirit to become the source of your relationships, He turns you into that. Let me say it this way. Um, You should know that when the Holy Spirit pours into you every day, number one, His power is endless. It's endless. Jesus says to this lady, Lady, if you knew the gift of God that sets before you, you'd just ask. Listen. If you knew how much mercy the Holy Spirit had, you'd just ask. If you knew how much love He's willing to give, you'd just ask. If you knew how much peace He has to offer, you'd just ask Him. That's all you do. You'd say, well, of course, Holy Spirit, I need it from you. Listen, when you are under guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can do anything relationally. There is no bound to what you can do. You can forgive. You can encourage you can be patient, you can dream, you, you can wait, you, you, can, you can speak life. Listen, whatever you cannot do with the Holy Spirit, you absolutely can do it. There is nothing that you cannot do in relation. And to this point, he is so powerful that when you show up every day to let him put in your life what you need relationally, it doesn't matter how they act. They can treat you terribly and you live in peace. They can speak death and you'll live in life. Because you have a source that's endless. Not, not only is it endless, but listen, it's effective. It is effective to depend on the Holy Spirit. Here's why. Jesus has one conversation with this lady. And the Bible says she returns to the town that she was trying to hide from. She walks in the middle of the town. She's had so transformed. And she says, um, she says listen here. <laughs> she says, I've met a man. And the town goes, yeah, what's this, number seven? And she says, I'm telling you, this guy has satisfied every thirst I've ever had. And they thought that was a big deal because she's a thirsty lady. And the Bible says that that town followed her out to meet Jesus. And that that town surrendered their lives to Jesus. How effective is the power of God in your relationships? In one conversation, it turned a lady from broken into a world changer. 
Listen, nobody's better at relationships than, than Jesus. Nobody. You know why? Because he fixed humanity's most broken relationship. Listen, you were separated from God, dead in your sin, unable to earn a seat at God's table, unable to perform well enough to get to God's table, unable to do anything, offer anything. Your best was as dirty laundry, Scripture says. And Jesus steps in and says, I can fix this. And he hangs on a cross and reconciles us to God. There is no relation. Listen, if he can heal the relationship between God and man. He can heal your marriage. He can heal your kids. Now here's the last one. This is the best one. His power is available every day. Every single day. The key to all relational success is this. You show up every day and let him pour in for what life will require you to pour out. Listen, all you got to do is show up and let him pour in and then you can pour out in your marriage, you can pour out in your office, you can pour out to your kids. That's all you got to do is show up every day. And, 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 and Jesus says, lady, you just have to come to me, and I'll put in whatever you're going to need for that day. Listen, God knows who you're going to run into this week. And he knows some of them are going to, like, got demons of annoyance. And he can pour in enough to keep peace no matter who they are. He knows how your boss is going to act this week. He knows what, what, what hormones are going to be active in your house this week. And he can give you exactly what you need for it. Um, Kayla and I went through a real rough patch. Um, I mean, we, it was bad. We, um, we said some ugly things to each other. And we, we just wouldn't come off of our, you know, our, our points. And um, you could cut the tension in our house with a knife. And... Um, we got to the place where honestly we didn't want to make this work like I wanted to be right she wanted to be right and we wasn't budging so we went about six days without even talking to each other and um, I think the only reason that that didn't end up in divorce is this reason although we withdrew from one another we didn't withdraw from spending time with God as individuals and, and there was one particular morning about six days in that she was in the the, the lower level seeking God for her, her life and I was in the upper level seeking God for my life and we're probably praying against each other God you need to teach her how to act and God you need to change him you know but we were still seeking God and, and then on that particular day I, um, I was listening to a worship song and I was done and I was walking downstairs and it was on my phone and I was just carrying it with me and as I came down the stairs I realized on a completely separate device she was listening to the exact same song and not only was it the same song but as I walked down it was that verse that was coming forth on mine was the exact verse coming forth. I mean, word for word, these songs were in sync. And I thought, what are the chances of that? Strange. I paused. It was so odd. And when I paused, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to my heart. And here's what he said. Son, even when you and her are out of sync, I'm working behind the scenes to bring you in sync. And though I was filled with so much frustration, peace came over me. And it was within hours of what we couldn't do in six days of our strength, within hours, we had apologized to each other and we were back in unity in our home. Let me be very clear. Kayla and I are not married because of our abilities or our compatibilities. We are married because the Holy Spirit is our source. And every single day, that she can't provide what I need or I can't provide what she needs. The Holy Spirit is an endless, effective, everyday source. And he'll be the exact same thing for you. You don't have to be better. You just have to have more of him in your life. That's it. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to pray for you. Um, will you bow your heads with me? I just, I, I'm going to have to move very quickly, but I want you to give me your full attention because God's going to transform some hearts. Listen, if you're here and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, like I'm not talking about like your family calls themselves Christian. I'm not talking about like you come to church. I'm saying, do you have a relationship with Christ? And, and listen, you know with certainty that if your life ended later today, you would spend eternity with him. If you cannot answer that with certainty, 
I, I want to speak to you for just a second. The reason you have to give yourself to Jesus is because you don't get his power without him being Lord in your life. So some of you want this so desperately for the relationship that's broken, but you're not following Jesus. I want to, I want to pray for you if that's you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to make a decision. Jesus did all the work on the cross. All you've got to do is choose to put your faith in him. That's all you have to do. So here's what we're going to do. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to see you. I want to see the decision you're making, and I want to pray for you. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Joe, I'm choosing today to follow Jesus. Pray for me. I want you to stick your hand up right now. Pastor Joe, pray for me today. I'm choosing today to follow Jesus. Leave it up. I want to see your face. I see here and 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 here. Come on, Pastor Joe, pray for me. I'm choosing today to follow Jesus. Yep, right there, right over there. Yep, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Yep, come on, come on, wave at me. I see you. There you go, Pastor Joe, pray for me. I'm choosing today to follow Jesus. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I see you. Now listen, let, I, I want to pray this prayer together. Here we go. And you gotta, you gotta, I want you to speak it out. I want you to pray for yourself. And I'm just going to pray it over you. Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, come on, I want to hear you. Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I'm lost without you. I need you. And from this day forward, I will follow you. I will not choose my way. I'm choosing your way. I believe you did what you said you did. You are who you claimed you are. And that you are now Lord of my life. And I will follow you every day for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate a handful of people who are choosing to follow Jesus today. Come on, Life Point. Stand to your feet in this place. Thank you, Pastor Joe, for sharing your heart. What a message. What a message. Listen, we all got better today. Let's make sure we apply something, right? Um, just a reminder of a couple of things. Listen, we have three English services here. It's a little crowded, not, not crazy crowded today, but crowded. We've got some room at the nine o'clock and I believe sometimes a little room at the 12. If you want to help us by sliding over there and creating a space for somebody to meet Jesus, that would be awesome. And uh, we're so thankful that you guys are part of the family. We love you guys. Listen, if you connected with Jesus today, we want to connect with you. We don't want you to miss this opportunity. If you'll go to the, to the information desk and just let them know, say, hey, I, I accepted Jesus today. My life changed today. We want to walk in the discipleship process with you. We want to walk this journey with you. We're all getting better together, making disciples, new ones and better ones. Amen. So thank you guys for that. We love you. Let's go out and change the world this week. Let's pray our benediction together. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you, Life Point. Hey guys, I want to thank you for joining us today. I pray that the message was encouraging, inspiring, and challenging. There's a couple of things that I want to ask you to do. One is to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the new content that comes out weekly. The second is to help us to continue the ministry to the people of South Florida. And you can do that by clicking the give button below. We are so glad that you came by once again. We look forward to seeing you soon. Grace and peace.